Good morning. Welcome to another live session. Hopefully you're doing well and everything is going well. Welcome to Sorrow Doc Training Live Show. Hope uh, you can hear me and see, see me well. Uh, I have a presentation that I'm going to be presenting today, but mainly we're going to talk about how to train your beagle dogs. In general, your dogs, how do you train them? I'm going to work on some um, training today, basically uh, dog owner training. I would say we're going to dig into uh, dog training psychology, a little bit deep, deeper dive. And we're going to figure out how to uh, make your dog training journey a little bit better. I can see John Cipolla is in the house and Jean is in the house as well. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions. Uh, whenever um, you have any questions, just leave it in the chat area and I will be answering the, the questions. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. And if you have any questions, as I said, as we go along in the, the presentation that I have, um, if it's related to the presentation, I'm, I'm going to read it and answer it right away. Uh, if not, then I'll answer it at the end of the presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll be right here, right here uh, on the corner uh, if may, most of the time. And if you uh, have any uh, suggestions or any comments or anything that you want to share about your journey in the dog training, go ahead and feel free to share it with us. So my name is Saro, uh, Saro Bogosian. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. I've been a beagle owner, mainly, I would say, most of my life. I love beagles. And Jonah was my first beagle, Jonah the beagle. And then we had Harvey. We have Harvey, Harvey the beagle. We lost uh, Jonah uh, about six years ago. We, he passed away six, year, six years ago. We have Jonah, Harvey now, Harvey the beagle, and Annie the beagle mix. So uh, I've been beagle lover, beagle owner for many, many years. I have had uh, a dog daycare business that I just uh, sold it. Uh, it was called Jonah's Art, but mainly um, the owner of Sorrow Dog Training. Uh, published a few books uh, and one of them is Two Simple Changes. The other one is a Dogs, Five Essential Needs, uh, Understanding Rescue Dogs, and How to Adopt a Dog. So I have uh, I've been pretty busy. I'm working on a couple of other books as well. Uh, I've been a dog trainer for many years, over 20 years. I've done all kinds of dog training. I've run obedience classes, agility classes, a um, few programs, uh, outdoor um, dog training classes. I've met uh, a few, I would say, experts in the dog industry, including Do Dr. Judy Morgan, Matt Beisner, 
Caesar Milan, Karen Baker and Rodney Habib, Lesla uh, and Fr Fernando, a uh, few of uh, people, professionals that I have met and learned from. Uh, as I said, I have been a dog daycare owner and dog trainer for many years. And here is uh, one of the days that I used to be operating at doggy daycare. So I'm not against giving treats to dogs, but being dependent on treats to train the dogs is the problem, right? Uh, I'm, I give treats to my dogs and you should be as well. So we are going to find out <clears throat> why is it that your dog misbehaves? Uh, why is it that your dog doesn't listen to you? And how do you get better results in your dog training? And how do you get better results from your dog overall? <clears throat> so the, the reason I became a dog trainer because it was of Jonah, Jonah the Beagle, right? Jonah was the spark that got me started into this dog training journey. Um, he was my teacher. There's me, there's Jonah in a, in a dog training class uh, that you usually take. And he was pretty well behaved, but one of the problems that we had, he was like, you know, very fun, fun beagle. We had so much fun together. He was such a great beagle. Uh, the, one of the problems that we had was that he did not show interest in treats. You know what I mean? It, and it is very unusual to have a beagle and then the beagle is not interested in treats. So this kind of gave me, you know, the, the, the opportunity to learn how can I connect to my dog in a healthy way? And there's the clue. He was giving me the clue, right? He was telling me how I could connect with him, that it was healthy. So we couldn't, you know, I was joining the classes to learn how to treat train my beagle who was not treat motivated. And yet he was giving me the clue and I wasn't getting it, right? And I did a lot of research to find a healthy method of dog training that would give me 100% results, focus, and the bond that I needed to my, with my dog. And Jonah was always teaching me. My journey took, to, took me to uh, a area, time that I even went and got, um, you know, went to school uh, to the College of Behavioral Science, and I even got certified as a dog trainer. So I, I went to school for a year, and I came uh, up with the method of dog training using play and praise reward system. So basically, I uh, became a dog trainer who used play and praise as a reward system. So I want to share this video with you uh, that uh, so you can see what beagles can do. And this is very in early journey of our training uh, um, journey. And I'm using his favorite toy and I'm using play and praise to reward him, to encourage him to run this agility course. So let's take a look. Tunnel. Here's the viewport coming. And, uh, yeah. Yes, and he gets rewarded with uh, his favorite toy. He loved toys. So he told me, he taught me that, hey, I don't need treats. I want you to play with me, right? So 
Let me see. How can I skip this one? Uh, do, do, do. Hold on. Let me see why it's not going to the next one. Okay. Technical difficulties, but here's another video. Uh, Harvey. Okay. He's going to go on a... Windows says it's not awfully thin, but it goes on an off dish like so you are able to off dish your Google Keep and then up. All right. I hope you enjoyed that section. I don't know how, why my movies, when I uh, play videos, it doesn't go forward. And I wanted to come back for a second just to elaborate on those couple of uh, pieces that I showed you. And I'm going to get into the uh, questions as well. Weeks and I see that there is a question. Brian, uh, there's question uh john yes it is impressive and that's the key you can do anything with your beagle if you do it the right way so vixen for example your question is is it harder to train a rescue pup than a pup that has been bought as a puppy it is a little bit more challenging but it's possible still if you do it the proper way uh harvey and annie they've been rescued as well no problem. You can't tell there have been they were uh, rescue dogs. If you do proper training, um, you will be able to uh, get great results as well. So Brian, I'm going to answer your question as well at the end. Uh, yeah, at the end of this presentation. So just wanted to share with you, you know, those videos that you just saw the possibilities that what your beagle is capable of doing right so understand that uh there they can do really good stuff right so if your beagle is not listening to you right is even because you have treats that's a problem and we'll find out why is it that what your beagle or your dog doesn't listen to you even though you have treats one of the things that you have to realize is that dogs have been bred and designed by humans for humans. This is very important. You know, we didn't just you know bring dogs to in, into into our lives just because we, we brought them because they were cooperating with us, right? They are great animals to have in our uh, in our lives. And treat training is not a natural method of training dogs contrary to what you have heard and learned and seen dogs are not born with treat training skills you have to kind of teach a dog to learn how to respond to treats it's not a natural process for dogs and when you start teaching them with treats you start a disastrous domino effect right so as soon as you bring your dog home, whether you have a beagle or not, and you start introducing treats to train your beagle or your dog, you will get a lot of negative side effects out of it. So all the behaviors that you're experiencing are triggered by using treats. All the bad behaviors that you are not happy with, with jumping, chewing, counter serving, surfing, leash pulling, barking, 
begging, aggression, chasing, biting, all these behaviors are related to humans using treats to train their dogs. Now you're going to say, why is it that it's connected to these behaviors? Why is it that treats are connected to these behaviors? As I said, if you start introducing treats to your training system and use it as the main training system, everything is going to go wrong with you and your dog. Because most dog owners are using treats as a reward and they are rewarding their dogs at the wrong time and the wrong state of mind. Also, most dog owners are focused on tools. You, you see the, the pictures here? Instead of focusing on the real issue, which is training the dog, we're focused on using tree, uh, tools, including treats, tools that are harming our dogs, right? And tools that are not necessary to use and focus when we are training our dogs. You have to instead focus on your yours and your dog's emotions. We forget that dogs have emotions, just like us humans, right? They are the same, they are capable of feeling the same emotions that you're feeling, they're capable of feeling too. So you have to tap in to a little bit deeper uh, part of your dog. The science of motivation, that's what you want to do. You want to motivate your dog, right? The science of motivation, researchers have begun to better understand the science of motivation. So dopamine, a neurotransmitter, chemical messenger in the brain, most commonly associated with pleasure, has recently been identified as highly influential to motivation. Studies have shown that dopamine trans transmits signals before receiving rewards. This is the key word. Before receiving the rewards, the dopamine has been already uh, transmitted, encouraging us to achieve something positive or avert something negative. So dogs are capable of uh, you know, feeling and having, uh, they have the same thing. They have dopamine in their system. So this is the key. Before receiving rewards, before your dog gets a reward, you know, physical reward from you, physical, whatever kind of reward you're providing to your dog, even before your dog gets that reward, they are encouraged to achieve something positive or avert something negative. So research also on your dog's lack of motivation. Uh, uh, the reasons your dog is lacking motivation is uh, influenced by several factors. Anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, poor sleep quality, lack of sleep, stress, diet. Many, many dogs that I have come across, they are also uh, experiencing anxiety, depression. They are low self, they have a low self esteem. They are not confident. They don't sleep enough or they don't have a good sleep and they are stressed and they have a poor diet. So additionally, as a dog owner, you can have barriers that can cause you to lose focus and motivation. Examples of perceived barriers includes insufficient fund or resources. You can be also stressful as well because you, you, you're not doing financially good. Fear of failure. All of us are feeling that way. Lack of knowledge, lack of time, and owner, uh, overwhelming responsibilities. All of these things can cause us humans as well to feel uh, overwhelmed and stressed. So let's start with something small, some, making some small changes. Remind yourself of the new norm. Think before doing anything about your dog, right? The new norm is that you shouldn't be re depending on treats, okay? 
just don't depend on treats you know if you are constantly thinking about treats and giving treats to your dog remove that concept from your uh your system so one of my students uh, uh she uh, they left this uh, feedback says Sara uses a great system for training dogs. His system requires your self-discipline. And because of his lessons, we now have we now understand how important our role is in creating a well-balanced dog. We have noticed a big improvement in Gunner's obedience. Gunner is their dog. So you have to, they realize that they need to have self-discipline themselves, dog owners. And they started understanding their how important their role was in raising and training their dog. So it's not natural to use treats to train your dog. I want you to again understand that and um, realize. So a study has uh, shown, published recently in the journal Biology Letters, suggested that dogs' willingness to play with humans may have been a central feature in, feature in their domestication and may also have promoted sub, sub, subsequent uh, efforts to breed dogs for speci specific purposes. So dogs, you know, wolves or dogs, they started playing with humans long time ago. A study in National Geographic also, ancient wolves that played with humans likely evolved into today's friendly dogs. This is a massive study too. Uh, and all these studies have uh, are available for you to research. Even, even the biggest uh, dog trainer on YouTube, Zach George, has realized this. One of the reasons I loved and I still like uh, Zach is because he started playing with dogs and he even realized the concept of using play as a, uh, as a reward for your dog. Listen to what he says. So you can see even video has no sound. oh this video didn't have sound sorry um yeah for some reason i'm not able to get you to uh hear the sounds uh, i'll fix that some other time but let's continue uh, there we go so so if you have a playful dog it's easy to train your dog one way to train a dog is to play with the dog, okay? There was a study also done by Dr. Gregory Burns, who, um, okay, let me see if I can fix this issue. Uh, hold on, just give me a second. Present. Let me see if I can. Okay, this now we should have an audio. Um, can you let me know if you can hear this? So there was a study done by Dr. Gregory Burns, who he put dogs in an MRI machine and he uh, studied their brain activity. So this is what we are watching now. In over 20 dogs. And the orange areas show what parts of the brain are more active to this reward signal, this, this hot dog signal. Now, what I want to emphasize is 
the brain response is not directly to hot dogs, it's to the hand signal that means hot dogs. And you may think, well, that's not a, a big deal. It's still hot dogs, right? And it's no surprise that dogs like hot dogs. But it is a big deal because we train. Okay, seems like there's no audio again. So I just wanted you to watch that. And since we have audio now, I'm going to bring back Zach George as well. So you can hear what Zach was saying as well. Um, but the study that was done by Dr. Gregory Byrne proved to us that dogs, yes, they are responding to the hot dog, but they did also research that they separated two groups of dogs, one that they were rewarding them in the MRI machine with food and hot dogs. And the other group was just the, the dog owner saying, good boy, good girl, right? They realized, they saw that the dogs who were being praised, just praised, were as, you know, as their dopamine reactivity was as active as the dogs who were being given rewarded uh, with the uh, hot dog right that one is the same anyways right so why are we using the hot dogs then so we realized that also it's not the hot dog that the dog gets uh, uh, gets excited about it's the person who's giving the hot dog that causes the dog to get more excited so do, dopamine, remember, dopamine, it uh, transmits even before the reward is presented. That's very important to learn. So since we have audio, uh, I'm going to play as well uh, this uh, part from, you know, mo one of the most famous um, doctrines on YouTube as well. He talks about uh, the effects of and benefits of play. Play with your dog often. This has made a massive difference with inertia from day one. If your dog is the kind of dog that really does enjoy play, the fastest way to establish a bond between you and your dog is through lots of play. Play is the language of so many dogs, especially puppies. Use the power of play to your advantage. It's likely to get your dog to pay much better attention to you, which you can then leverage to train them virtually anything you want. Natural examples of play that most dogs are born knowing are chase, tug of war, elements of fetch and play wrestling, and so on. Dogs love to play all kinds of games with humans. You can even make up your own. Look for creative ways to engage and play with your dog and watch your training success skyrocket. So even Zach George is saying play is a good choice, right? So even he has realized it, and I'm sure he realized it many, many years ago. So how, does, how do dogs learn then? You know, let's understand how do dogs learn. Dogs learn, let me, let me see if this is going to, so why is not my, okay. Uh, dogs learn from you and by you play, playing with you. So this is very important for you to understand. Uh, dogs learn from you. They, they are, because they are so connected to humans, they are always looking at you to learn from you so they can learn from you and we, by you playing with them because when you play with your dog you're interacting with your dog and when you interact that's the best reward for your dog and that's the best thing that can happen to your dog you don't need to teach a dog how to play remember you know training dogs using treats you have to teach them 
how to get rewarded and trained and all that. But dogs and animals are born naturally and they know how to play. So you can tap into that natural uh, ideology that they have in their system already, an instinct that they have that they can play. So use the time you know that you have with your dog as an escape from reality and create a bubble to create a new reality. What I mean by that is I want you to de dedicate some time to just play with your dog. And this helps you to develop a real relationship with, with, with nature, your dog, your, yourself. You know, your dog is a natural being, right? And dedicate some days in the week for dog time only, right? Just literally shut down everything and just be involved with your dog. Commit to uh, the day and the time that you can be dedicating to your dog and play, you know, plan it ahead with your dog and plan it, plan what you will need to do and make it happen. You know, make it something that is routine, something that is a, uh, you're able to dedicate. Just hang out at home. You know, just simply hang out with your dog without doing anything. Just hang out at the park with your dog. You know, just hang out with them. You don't have to train, but just hang out with them. Um, it's doing to me. Uh, whenever I play a clip, um, you know, walk your dog. Right, that take your dog with your dog. I don't train my dogs. I play with my dogs. This is the concept that you have to realize and understand and also implement in your system yourself. You don't, you shouldn't be training your dog. You should be playing with your practice dog. Practice it. So we're so going to practice here's, here's using play. Time. All dogs love to play. Right. So I'm playing with Harvey. So Harvey's no? sitting. I'm going to sitting. I'm going to recording with the because he was he playing loves with the to play. toy. He loves and then, to play. You know, he's Harvey. running he's around. Like, ah, I'm going to tell him to sit. He yes. sits. And I, it. I play get with it. him. Right? I give him a, 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 a toy and we play a game. Right? So the more quality time that you spend with your dog the better your dog gets this makes you develop a real relationship with your dog and the results are priceless you also get to see results in your dog training aspect right so start training your puppy or your dog using play and praise reward system use this method to have fun with your dog and get excited about training your dog this makes you to want to train your dog so you will get great results. You know, when you play with your dog, you're having fun, right? Instead of treats stuck up on dog toys, this makes your dog be less focused on food and, or eating and, and a lot more on you and learning. Reward your, do reward your dog with followings, play, praise, games, other dogs, walks, allow your dog to slip, allow, uh, uh, allow your dog to be on your lap and automate this process, right? Make it a habit, habit and to play with your dog on a weekly basis and practice the new norm. Instead of using treats, use play to reward your dog. I played and trained my puppy at the same time and therefore I um, have gotten great results. Right, that's uh, that's Annie. Remember that ball? It's the same ball Jonah had it. It became Annie's toy now, right? So play with your dog, no matter what breed of dog you have. Look at that. Anybody can do anything, right? Praise your dog. Tell your dog, you're a good girl. You're a good boy. You're a good dog, right? Tell your dog. So therefore, the reason your dog doesn't listen to you. Even if you have treats, now you know because dogs don't value food as much as we think they do. Also, we don't play with our dogs and train them enough. 
And that's why your dog, your dog doesn't listen to you. Is the light bulb coming on? So the secret sauce of better dog training is dog training using play and praise as a reward system. You know, look at the focus, right? She's focused on the ball. She's focused on the game. And if I tap into that focus, I get great results. So I wanted you to understand this concept that play and praise is very important, right? Very important, more important than treats. And you're wondering, so how can I, you know, train my dog using play and praise? So here's where I come in, you know, I want to invite you to work with me. I want you to learn more about this system, this concept, and work with me one-on-one, -on -one, right? I want to help you and coach you and train you 24 seven, okay? I want you to be involved with your dog 24 seven and learn how to train your dog. And the way I do it, is the same way that I've done with thousands of students that I've trained, right? Uh, I, and everybody has uh, got the same or better results than me, actually, right? M my students, they learned this concept and started implementing this system using a plan, which I call it perfect dog plan. It's a perfect dog training and coaching plan. Okay, what that is, it's a program that it includes books, video lessons, uh, you learn how to leash walk your dog, you learn how to uh, teach obedience course, obedience uh, uh, commands to your dog, you learn a very important aspect and formula also, which is called a dog's five essential needs of your dog that you need to provide, that's in the program as well. You get your the concept of training your dog without the use of treats or food. All of these programs, all of these concepts and ideas are in the program. So you get weekly coaching and training with me. You have a video training library that you can refer to. There are documents, downloadable files that you can download them and study them. Unlimited email support. You learn basic obedience commands without the use of treats or food, aversive tools, personal domination. You learn how to walk your dog on a loose leash. You learn how to address your common behavioral issues, how to stop or improve behavior, your dog's behavior, and much more. <clears throat> All you have to do is to set up a free discovery call, we call it. The link is in the chat area, uh, in the chat area, also in the description. I'm going to put it uh, in the chat area as well. You can just uh, see if we are a match. Just like, you know, one of my students, I'm blown away, she says. This is the best training program I've attend attended. It is packed full of well thought out be uh, dog behavior insights and tips. I'm very pleased. You designed the course so I can return to specific information and listen again and again. You are working on exercise and bonding. I thought I was bonded with my dog before. However, I see things differently now. I humanized, humanized my dogs. I believe they, were, they will appreciate the new line of communication we build together. Thank you, Sarah. This is good stuff. This is just one of my students. So, Here's a couple of video captures of you know, our weekly coaching calls that we you know, join and we talk about our dogs. We make, fix them, we clean, clean them, and we answer your questions. Again, it's called Perfect Dog uh, Training and Coaching Plan. One other student, Sylvia, they had said Soros training course taught us a lot about all the right and treat free ways to condition and train our dogs. We look forward to our next level of training, right? So if you want to have a good, well-behaved, healthy dog, now is the time to take action. And all you have to do is just simply check out the links in the description area. The link is in uh, below. You have to apply 
uh, to see if you are qualified for the program. Uh, and also, it's this program is based on invitation. What that means is I figure out if you are the right student for the program, if you have everything set up properly, and if you're the right student for the program, then I will invite you to the program. And if you find that I'm not the right person, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Um, it's a free video call that you can join. Uh, so I'm uh, going to start answering your questions now. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. So uh, let me go to back to the beginning from answering questions. And we'll start with Wixen. So is it harder to train a rescue pup than a pup that has been bought as a puppy? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, if you are going to be using traditional method of dog training, using treats and food, yes, you're going to make it harder. But if you tap into your dog's natural and normal uh, insight of your dog, then you can make it easier for you to train your rescue dog. Now, rescue dogs, obviously, and naturally, not naturally, but automatically come with a package. What that means is uh, some, I don't know exactly how old your dog is, right? But if your dog, let's say, is eight months old, six months old, a, a year old, two, three years old, they've already learned certain behaviors. They have committed to that behavior and they are they have become part of normal natural behavior of your dog. So once they have learned that, you can't really undo it. You can start managing and controlling those behaviors better. But if you are using, you know, wrong method of dog training, you're going to encourage those behaviors even more. So remember, when we use treats or food to train our dogs, it, it backfires. It becomes uh, an issue because now we are rewarding our dogs the wrong way. And then we are rewarding our dogs with the wrong state of mind which leads to other behaviors to develop, right? I hope that makes sense. So it depends. It depends on where your dog is at and how are you going to train your dog. You know, I hope that makes sense. Brian, my two and a half year old beagle has never been off leash in an open area. Even on the leash, she is super scent focused and isn't the best at listening to verbal command, commands when outside. That is again because you haven't trained your beagle properly. You know, there are steps that we need to take when it comes to training our dogs or beagles. First of all, we skip those uh, steps. And second of all, we use the wrong method of dog training. And third, we are uh, not um, tapping into the, the breed specific specification of a, uh, of a dog. So let me break it down. So probably you haven't trained your dog properly. Right, your beagle. It has you. You feel like you have trained your beagle, but you haven't because you you're not getting great results. Right, that's obvious. Right, if you have done proper training, then you would get great results. The proper training hasn't been done. First of all, second of all, you haven't taken the proper steps. So when I say proper steps, for example, we spend a lot of the we break down the training. Uh, journey into five parts, five levels. Inside of the house, backyard, front yard, st uh, streets, dog park. So it we have to make sure that each of these segments are perfect before we move on to the next segment. So for example, 
this is the house and this is the dog park. So you are going from the house. I don't know if you have trained your beagle at house at all, but instead of going to the dog park, you have to go to backyard. So you're going from house to dog park, expecting to get the same results <clears throat> that you were getting at home. So you're obviously you're not going to get the same result. So you have to bulletproof your dog's be, uh, obedience level at home and then bulletproof it in the backyard and so on and on. So if you do that, first of all, then you're going to get great results in the dog park. And third, as I said, there are certain things that we have to cons be considered about beagle breed. Beagle breeds are not the same as other breeds, right? Their nose is always on the ground. They get, they have been bred for hunting. They've been bred to work side by side with humans. They've been bred very uh, specifically for certain tasks and reasons, right? So we have to consider those and then expect certain behaviors to be normal and certain behaviors to be unusual. So those are the things that you have to address. And again, if you want to learn more about, you know, what, how do we, um, how do we train a beagle? How do we, you know, get great results? I invite you, if you are struggling with your beagle, I invite you to, you know, consider joining my program, right? And it's a just a free call that you can set up, right? And uh, join my perfect dog plan program. Uh, find out if you're uh, um, suited for this program. Uh, if you're really desperate, if you're having a tough time with your beagle, the program is there. I have the solutions. It's up to you if you want to uh, use those solutions and make it better. Uh, but uh, the program is there and the solutions are there. We can dive in even deeper and learn more. And also I can see if I can help you uh, even further. So yeah, uh, there's a link in the description below that you can click on it, set up a day and time that we can meet and go uh, from there. Uh, Brian Bull uh, is saying, uh, is it realistic to think she can be trained for off-leash? Oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> Brian. Uh, yes, it can. It can. Uh, it's just a matter of, again, doing the right, uh, using the right method and system. Um, Nathan my beagle bowling is two years old and once off leash he tried to run away and after that have never been off leash yes uh, again there is there is a way to address those uh, issues you also have to consider when it comes to beagles we have to uh, go through few steps few levels so we start with a short leash. Short leash, when I mean what I mean by short leash is six foot leash. And then we have to train our beagle on a long leash and then train them off leash and then off leash them. So many dog owners, many beagle owners skip those steps, right? They train the dog, the beagle, they may or may not train their beagle and they train a little bit, assuming that they have trained their beagle, and then all of a sudden they off-leash their beagle, expecting the dog, the beagle, to listen to them. It's impossible to get results like that. You're not going to get great results like that. So I suggest you to focus on training your beagle better, uh and making sure that you go through the steps properly there are certain steps that we need to take you know again short leash long leash off leash and then off leash you have to do it at home you have to do it in the backyard front yard street or in the parks 
and we have to do a lot of repetitions of proper way of, ways of training our dogs in order to get great results. Again, if you want to learn more and join my program, there is a link that you can apply below this video. There's a dis in the description. Uh, it's, a, it's called Perfect Dog Plan. Um, you can learn more about it uh, in, in my website, uh, sorodogtraining.com slash perfect dog and we can figure out if you are a qualified person to join the program if i or if i'm a qualified person to be your trainer and coach so i hope you enjoyed uh, today's uh presentation and training i hope there are some light bulbs in your uh, system now that in your head that is going and saying oh wow i didn't know this I better research a little bit more about this. I hope you learned something and you benefited from this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions in the comments area. If you're watching this on a read-on and a replay, and if you have, um, um, if you could share this video with others as well, it would be great. Uh, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel by subscribing, clicking on this subscribe button. Um, John says, we enjoy, as always, share, share stream to social media sites. Uh, yes, my social media site is uh, basically, if you go to, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, at Sorrow Dog Training. It's easy to, I'm on Instagram, I'm on uh, Twitter, and I'm also on YouTube. All of the handles are at Sorrow Dog Training. I hope you enjoyed the show. I had fun uh, sharing this information. And until next time, have fun with your dog.